wake up. Stop slurping your coffee. That's how you're supposed to drink coffee. Okay, let's just get started. We're live. Welcome back to the podcast. Oh my God. Whoa, Welcome drums back, coming everybody. in hot. Sorry. <laughs> Drum sat down and shook the whole desk. So today we're actually doing, here, let me set this up a little bit better. Dun, dun, dun. We are actually doing our podcast recording and we decided that we would do a live Q&A because Jerome and I were sitting here and we were thinking, like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? Like, what's relevant at this very moment? We like to talk about things that either we're currently going through. Can you talk to the podcast or, you, or the live? I already said hi to the <laughs> podcast. Oh, okay. You crashed the whole desk. Did you want to say hi? Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're live on the podcast. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. You got really into what you were doing, but we decided to do the Q&A. Jerome and I like to always talk about um, things that are relevant, things that are going on coming up. So our podcast is kind of you know, a place for us to, to talk about things that occur. I don't like to talk about random stuff that I've I'm not currently in the moment. Yeah, I know. We were trying to figure out what to do, and we were like, oh, what can we talk about, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think it's just nice to talk about things that are currently coming up for us. Yeah. Right? Oh, your camera fell. Oh, I can't seem to get this right. Hold uh, on. Well, Serena fixes a camera. Guys, don't forget to get your books on audibletrial.com backslash cafecito JJ Serena. Links in the bio as usual. Love it. So we decided to do a Q&A and we asked some questions on Instagram. So if you're not following me, follow me. By the way, it's February 12th, 2021. At Aligned with Serena. And the link is also in the bio, whether you're watching this, listening to this, all the things. Uh, but we, we got a few questions and I wrote down like four, I think I wrote down five or six of them. And I thought we would just go through them and answer them. Jerome actually doesn't know the questions. Let's rock with them. I was like, okay, here's the questions I'm going to pick out. And he said, no, just ask me live on the podcast. So do, we're doing it live. I don't Fuck say it. We're going rogue. I don't say anything. <laughs> My responses. So, well, first of all, this Sunday's Valentine's Day, babe. What'd you get me? I'm not telling you, babe. The whole day plan, guys. Jerome, we actually used to celebrate Valentine's Day. I think we did it like twice. Yeah, like in the very beginning and the cute little, like, oh, my boyfriend. It's like my dad says, Valentine's Day is for the bad boyfriends. The bad husbands. Sips tea. Yeah, get that tea sipping. Yeah, Jerome and I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. I don't know. I'm curious. And if you're, you know, here with us live, comment and let us know. Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Because, I don't know, I do feel like it's just a commercialized, like made-up holiday. It's like holiday. a noob couple holiday. No! not true <laughs> it's a new i just couple, feel bro. like it's so such a random but I, but i will say on the opposite of that i guess it's nice to have a day dedicated to just like spend time with your partner but i think valentine's day should be about like all the people you love everybody you know? yeah like everyone like who do you love and showing them love but anyways so what we thought we would do is just q a to just answer your guys' questions about us i said questions on anything relationship personal business parenting whatever Jerome and i it was funny because i was like Jerome and i are an open book and i was like i don't know babe would you consider yourself an open book um if you ask me yeah like dude if you ask me a question i'll answer it i'm not closed Nobody asked me questions though. So. I just think like you'll you'll answer a question, but you can like answer it in very few words. Like what? <laughs> like what are you asking me? I just like if someone asks me a question, like I'll give you the answer. Like I'm gonna go in. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go ahead and get started. If well, you... if, like for example, like if it's if we're like if I'm like at the checkout and I'm like checking out, and then someone's like. Uh, and like the cashier is like, Hey, like, how's your day going? I'm going to just say good, honestly. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to have a long ass conversation, but <laughs> yeah. like, dude, when they ask Serena, they'll be like, Hey, how's your day going? And Serena's like, well, and then she starts talking because they asked me how my day was. <laughs> I'm going to tell like, them how oh my, my day God. is. And it just gets in like this deep, long conversation. I'm like, we're just checking out for our I'm not an over giver of information, but like, I'll keep the conversation going. No, it's not like you're giving like TMI, but like yeah. you just talk about it and you just keep talking and talking and talking. I'm like, oh my God, like this didn't have to be like this. Trump's like, can you stop talking to that guy? No, <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and jump in. If you guys are live on Instagram, go ahead and ask us any question. Carla said, I'll take any excuse to celebrate. I love it. I mean, right? Why not? Big facts. Um, 
go ahead and ask us any questions that you guys have if you're live here on Instagram um, and we're happy to answer them. So Jerome and I, once again, doing a Q&A, just gonna go ahead and answer the questions that people ask us and uh, just kind of give you a chance to get to know us a little bit more. So yeah, that's all the people getting freaky on Zoom this weekend. Who's getting freaky on Zoom this yeah, weekend? Yeah, because COVID. <laughs> 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 so they can't like be together. I love it, dude. Just can you it. imagine being in a long distance or relationship? Like long distance? I'm saying you have to do um, virtual reality. VR. Yeah. Could you imagine being on the VR set for Valentine's Day? Long distance. Be kind of cool. Some weird stuff. All right, baby. Ready for dude, the first I was, question? I was looking up the origins of Valentine's Day and I couldn't find it, but it has. It's weird. Babe, every holiday is weird. Do you guys ever it's think like about ancient. that? It says the ancient Romans may also be responsible for the name of our modern day love. But I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of boring. <laughs> Valentine's Day is a very old tradition thought to have originated from a Roman festival. The Romans said. had a festival called Luper don't say it right. Calia. I'm correct. What is it? In the middle for February. Official, officially the start of their springtime. It's thought that as part of the celebration, Boys drew names of girls from a box, and I think they gave them like a flower. That's lit. I always like to know where stuff comes from. When we got married, I looked everything up, and I was like, why, why, why? I don't know. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that, though. But all right, let's go ahead and jump in, babe. Question number one. I want to get closer to you. You always want to get closer. Uh, I can't breathe. It's hot in here. I'm trying to get closer to the mic. Question number one is how does it or doesn't it feel? How does does it or does it not feel any different having a second child compared to already being a parent to Alex? I don't think I'd know till the child's born. I know. I would say for me, <laughs> the pregnancy is like feels completely different. It's wild. Um, it's just I'm in a completely different space in life and I feel like I swear to you guys I had Alex when I was 18 so I got pregnant at 17 I had him at 18 I don't care what anyone says like I'm only what I'm 27 now yeah but my body is not 18 anymore okay and I'm not old I'm just saying it's not the same like it was so easy and and it's just been rough this time so Every pregnancy is different, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't know yet, I guess. Like, how does it feel yeah. different from Alex? Yeah. I hope I'd love them both the same. <laughs> like, I'm not going to pick one over the dun, other. Dun, dun, Do we really love all of our kids equally? <laughs> We're going to find out. Here we go. Just kidding. Of course we do. I feel like that's a fear sometimes for people having a second kid. They're like, oh, am I going to love the second kid more than my first yeah. kid? Or, like, am I going to be a good enough parent for the second kid? Yeah, I think, yeah, so I don't know, does it feel different compared to already being a parent to Alex? I think, I think yes, for me it does, because I already have somewhat of an attachment and I'm going through a pregnancy, yeah. versus you kind of are like, well, I don't quite know yet, yeah. which makes sense. I'm like a side piece right now, <laughs> till like month three. Till month, oh, until the big breastfeed. Drone thinks I'm going to breastfeed for like three days. <laughs> Dude, it's going to be a minute. <laughs> Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's the first question. I think I think that kind of sums up our answers there. Yeah, pretty quick one. Yeah. I will say I'm super interested for after we have the baby to see, like, how work goes. Yeah, it'd be cool. You were just asking me today. You are like, what are we, how are we going to film the podcast with the baby? And I was like, we'll just have him right here just next to on. us, dude. Just bring him on live. Baby will be in my arm like this. <laughs> be chilling with the baby. I just don't really know. Like, so, for example... When I had Alex, of course, it's very standard. I was working. Well, I took three months off and then went back to work. And then with this baby, like, for example, I have a friend of mine. She was saying she's also due in 30 days. And she is taking five months off for maternity leave. Nice. And I've been, like, struggling with, like, how much time do I take off? But then I'm like, it's hard because... I have a, like a little bit of a different situation now. I don't, so I, I don't know. I don't know how long I'm going to take off. Babe, as much as you want. It's all good, baby. No, I know. But it's just, I mean, I also feel like after a couple months, I'm going to be like desperately wanting to work. Do both. If I'm being honest. So I guess I'm just going to ride with it and see you me. You feel like you're going to get mom shame? Look no, at her. She's working. She should no. be with her baby. Because I will be. <laughs> I will I'll be right here in another room. That's the thing. I don't even have to go anywhere and it doesn't matter. That's a whole nother can of worms. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I guess that's the only thing that I'm curious, just like how will things be different when we have the baby compared to raising Alex? It's just going to be a, a totally different experience. Oh, it'll for sure be fun. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I keep telling Jerome I can't wait. He's going to have like a mental breakdown. Why? Because like, 
I just feel like you're gonna like I don't know. We'll have to save that. We're just gonna pause this conversation for after the baby comes and see what happens. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, actually, a lot of baby questions. The second question is, what most excites Jerome about welcoming baby? Oh wow, that's a yeah, good question. I know. Guess what excites me the most? I kind of want to see what they look like. Is that weird? What he <laughs> I looks see like. What he what it looks like. Sorry. <laughs> Classic dad. You said move. they. We're not having twins. <laughs> I want to see. You want to see what he looks like. See what he looks like. Yeah. I'm hoping he's a good combination of us, and that he doesn't just look like one of us, which would probably be you. I think that's the thing I'm most excited about. I just want to see how the baby looks. Yeah. See how he acts. Yeah. That's what you're most excited about? I mean, and I... Yeah. That could be it. Yeah, I guess that's it. I'm a simple dude, man. Yeah. Yeah, just be cool to just be with him. I was going to say, I I, I think mean, reliving... I might keep going. Go I think reliving, yeah. like, the... Like the early stages, like seeing the first like six to seven months, mm -hmm. I think living that part, I'm gonna be excited. Yeah. And honestly, do they just say, oh, you don't sleep and stuff and all this nonsense? But I'm excited, man. You sleep. I don't know why people why are people so say dramatic. That? Why people gotta tell me that? And my memory of having Alex was it's like the best. The first three months are like the best months of having a baby. All they do is sleep. Yeah. Unless you have to go right back to work, it's a whole other story. But if you're on the baby schedule, Yo, give me the crying baby too, though. Oh, I will. I'll take it both. Guys, you hear you heard it here first. I'm not <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I love it. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, you know what's funny? The, for the first question that says how it feels now that I think about it, how it feels different from being a parent to Alex. We were mm -hmm. just having this conversation the other day. Yeah. Where when I met Alex, I was 18. Yeah. Oh, we did have this yeah, is like we, a deep conversation. Yeah, and then I was telling her like I don't know if I was like mature enough to even be with the baby at that point or I underst or understood the magnitude of And you are now? I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm 10 years older. I feel like I understand a little bit Jokes, more now. I joke. And then, um... Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe lose my train of yeah. thought. Yeah. No, we were on a walk and I don't know what brought that up. We were talking about Alex and then we were just talking about like you know, well, actually, we were talking about like childhood wounds yeah. <laughs> on our walk and then Jerome was kind of saying like, man... I wonder what wounds Alex has. Like, I wonder where, cause we all have unmet needs as children and you can't meet your kids needs all the time. And so Jerome was saying like, I wonder what unmet needs Alex has. And I was explaining to him, well, you know, there will come a point where like Alex is going to have different wounds because of his being raised with, by you. And then having someone who wasn't a biological father who wasn't present in his life. And like, that's going to impact him. Yeah. And me understanding deeper, like, mindset wise on just even I was telling him that one thing that I was in my Ayurveda course they were going over which I already have learned about but it's just the effect that we as a parent have on our kids even when they're in the womb because mm -hmm. it's from the age of zero to seven when you're mostly like become who you are in this world yeah and that's when you said oh my gosh and I was like yeah like think about what I went through when I was pregnant with Alex I became a single mom da, 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 oh, all this thanks. crazy stuff was going on so Jerome starts panicking and he's like oh my gosh like what like what are Alex Alex is gonna have like childhood wounds <laughs> and I was like Babe, it's okay. Like, well, I was saying, like, I felt like I could have been better. Yeah, you're being I, hard I was, on yourself. I guess. Yeah. But I was like, I've been saying, like, I was 18, 19. Like, maybe I didn't understand, like, the gravity of that, like, I do now. But there's people 30, 40 who still don't understand the gravity of the choices we make and the way we impact our children. Well, now I Wounds. Know. Well, we do. <laughs> yes. That's, that's why I guess that's like a big difference, then. Yeah. From what, like, from Alex to this baby. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I was just, I'll just kind of finish that by saying that what, like what I was telling Jerome is what I believe is like, w I was telling him like, look what I've been through and yet I am who I am. And if I didn't go through what I went through as a child, I wouldn't be who I am today. And so like even Alex is like things, his own like wounds and things as he grows up, that makes Alex who Alex is. Like, that makes our kids who they are, too. Like, we can't protect them from everything. Yeah. Life has to happen. So, yeah, Jerome was being really hard on himself for a second, and I was just like, that's life. Because to answer the first question, yeah, that'd be the biggest difference. Yeah. I've thought about that, too. Note. Just how, yeah, our next child will have a, a different experience with us because in a lot of ways, Alex kind of grew up with us. Exactly. Right. That's like, that was my point. From 18 yeah. to where we are now. I mean, there's been a lot of evolved consciousness, right. I would say. Yeah. 
Which I would say, like, round of a fucking applause because some people still are not, like, that. you don't just get there. That's true. It takes yeah. a lot of work and looking at yourself in the mirror. Exactly. So, yeah, good answer. Um, so that was your second question, which was what, what most excites Drew about welcoming baby, which is awesome. The question doesn't ask me, but I just want to say that I'm just most looking forward to those first couple months Yeah. where I'm not working and like, you're not, we're not doing anything. We're just together. Yeah. Like just together as a family, like you're like in your own world. And it's going to be the summer. We'll be in the house with the AC on. <laughs> Seriously, where we live, it is so hot. It's That's like a hundred fucking degrees. Yeah, exactly. All right. Question number three, how do you keep the romance alive even when you both are so busy? I mean, I'd say you're more busy than me. Yeah, but still, I don't see you. Like yesterday, what well, I came downstairs, it was like 5.45, and you were like, babe, you worked a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Our lives are different, man. I feel like people, like, I mean, there was even, like, I think we've said it, like, in the previous podcast, like, back when we lived, used, like, four years ago. Mm-hmm. You used to work in the mornings and I used to work at night and there'd be like some days where I wouldn't even see you. Like you'd be sleeping by the time I got home. Mm -hmm. But I guess it would just be making the most out of the opportunities that we did have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I think it's like. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just making the time that you have together count. And that's a conscious decision. Like yeah. we have this it, <laughs> and it's not perfect. I would say it takes effort too, man. Like it is yeah. hard sometimes. That's like yesterday. Drum has this like group chat with his freaking, I hope you're, I hope Steven's watching. <laughs> <laughs> he has this group chat with like his best friends and we were like going to bed. We were watching a movie. The movie ended. And then I'm like, okay, cool. And we're like, turn the lights off. And I like roll over and I'm like, going to bed but like drum and i always talk before we fall asleep and then you know we're gonna cuddle and like all the things drums just sitting in the corner of the bed oh no is that alex's school i think so let's see here um got got a little pause there i was gonna say they didn't call me we're just sitting in i turn over and i go to bed and drum's sitting in the corner of the bed and he's like checking his phone which is like no big deal but also he's not getting off like he's in it he's sucked in and finally like five minutes later when i'm like well okay serena you have a choice like do you go to bed or do you say something and i'm like dude what are you doing dude, can you have friends first <laughs> <laughs> but i was telling him like for example it's such a conscious choice after a certain time in the evening and Alex goes to bed, that's our time to connect. Yeah. So if you're a parent, cause I, the woman who asked this question is a parent. It's Alex goes to bed at 8 PM and after 8 PM, it is our time to be together. Dude. Right. Because even before 8 PM, Alex is like all over me. Yeah. You know, like He's wanting just... to play and hang out. What are you guys doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, I mean, kids. How are you breathing? How are you breathing? Dude, Alex does not leave us. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, like it's important. It's important that you actively make the decision with your partner and say like, okay, like this is our time to spend together. You yeah. know what I mean? And then the phones are hard, dude. The phones are hard for me. especially. I try. Yeah. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm done with my phone. And so I like to go put it like on the kitchen counter and like yeah. go walk away or well, I use mine in. for entertainment and Serena's using hers for work. So when, at the end of the day, when you're done, you're like, Oh, I don't want to look at this yeah. anymore. And I'm just looking at it to just like relax. Yeah. Yeah. Which drives me nuts. So it's like, it's not perfect. So the question was someone asked, once again, um, how do you keep the romance alive even when you both are so busy? The question is making the moments you do have together count. Exactly. So for example, in the evenings, like we said, Alex goes to bed at eight o'clock. Okay. After eight o'clock, like we should not be on our phones. Like that's dedicated time where we watch a movie together or even <laughs> sometimes I'll like have my moment where he's like, well, like we both don't want to watch TV. We're sick of watching movies. And then I'm just like, well, cool. So like, just put your phone down and like, look at me and talk to me. And he's just like, Oh my goodness. It definitely takes effort though. Yeah. It takes effort. But I think also in those moments, cause she said specifically like romance. So one, like having that intimate time in the evenings where you're, you're committed and you've made the conscious decision, like we're going to spend an hour together or two hours together. I'm trying to think even before, before COVID, I think last year we were mm -hmm. trying to make an effort to do that more. Right. Like connect more. You remember that? Yeah. Well, I also think like, okay, now Alex is in school. And so it's like most of the time nowadays I've been working like during hours, but like, okay, so can you take like 
I guess it just depends on your situation. Obviously, we both work from home. Yeah. So it's like if I can go downstairs and take like a 30 minute break with Jerome, I'll be like, hey, like I have 30 minutes and he's not if he's not if he's available and he's home, then I'll try to like put our phones down and like eat and just like have a conversation with each other. What was the last romantic thing we did then? Romantic? I guess I said romance, keeping it alive. It was the last thing we did that Yeah, was but romantic. keeping your romance alive is like your connection with each other. What's that mean? Like the connection? Yeah, like keeping your romance alive. That connection. Lie. It's I mean easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's a conscious effort and that's not easy. What do you to mean? To make that choice. I mean it's kind of just there all the time. Yeah, but how many times do I have to ask you, can you put your phone down? Can you get off your phone? That's true. But that's and just what does that do habit. for me? As soon as I have to ask him to get off his phone, I'm done. I don't even want him to sit next to me. That's true. <laughs> so if he would just do it automatically, our romance would be even more burning and passionate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, so yeah, I mean, it, it just comes back to make a conscious decision with your partner. Like, what is that time you guys are spending together? And then hold each other accountable. I'm not perfect either. Sometimes I get lost in my phone or I get inspired and all of a sudden I want to open up my laptop and work, work again. Yeah. And so it's yeah. definitely the effort because there's times too when I'm on my phone and I notice it and I'm like, I'm not, I need to get off and I don't. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I That's doing? So like, bad. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So that would be, that would be my answer. I think that sums it up though. It's just those making a conscious effort and agreeing on the times that you can be together that you are because you can easily just not like at the end of the day, we can just do our own thing and be on our phones. Yeah. We're all actually, we're actually like weirdly close to yeah. where we spend like every second of the day together sometimes if we could. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, like we want to be together. I feel like if like at the end of the night and then you were like done working it and then I like was playing on my Xbox or something mm -hmm. and like I try to just play video games, you'd get super mad. First of all, you hardly play video games. But if I did though? Yeah, I, because it's like, okay, cool. It's the end of the day. You had the whole day. We both had the whole day to do what we needed to do. Now it's after eight o'clock and it's our time to be together. See, so basically to her be bossy. <laughs> Lay down the hammer. No, but Don't take no for that's an our conscious decision. We <laughs> made kidding. that choice. That's like, this is our time together. And so, yeah, like if, you know. I feel like there's times too where I'll tell you like, hey, babe, I'm doing this. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay, Or there's fine. a game on that I want to watch or yeah, like there's something the I want to do. And I mean, like there, I could go take a one hour shower and it's read the a book. And it's a compromise. If I told you that I wanted to play video games from eight to nine, like on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not doing that. Just saying. <laughs> I like, like, what? I don't is do that, that your shit. only example? But I'm like, this is the first thing that popped up to my head. Like if I do want to do that and yeah. I tell you, you'd be like, fine, you know? Yeah, if you really wanted to do it. I mean, there are times where I definitely want to do stuff. Yeah. Like, I have certain, like, personal courses and things. Like, not work-related, but, like, personal development-related. Or I want to... Dude, I'm telling you, like, my baths that I normally take. Yeah. Those take me, like, an hour. Dude, like, doing stuff like that. I enjoy both of them. Like, time alone and time together, so... Yeah, so it's just communication, which kind of goes into the next question. What is it? Which my is... My hurts. I'm staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is your communication style and love languages. Yours versus his, and how do the two of you show up for each other? Was you did something part? for me yesterday that I was, like, thrilled about. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, one is, what is your love language? I think, what was mine? You know it. So, it? yeah, mine is acts of service. Drums is, um, like, touch. Touch, yeah, yeah. Physical. Physical touch. Drum likes to be touched. I'm trying to slap that. I'm like, please don't touch me. <laughs> 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 so that's both of our love languages, which of course couldn't be any more opposite. It's funny. So Jerome will like constant, and, and this used to be a really big thing in our relationship. Like, for example, like you were like, dude, like you never stop and like touch me. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, cause I realized I didn't know at the time, like, you know, I assume like if I do things for you, like you feel loved, yeah. and, but that's not your love language. And that's I do what like when you get. cook. <laughs> How cliche. <laughs> but that's because I've been making like better, like really yeah. more indulgent. I like when you do my laundry too. I don't even I'm do your kidding. laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Drums and doing joking. the laundry. Um, no, but so I didn't know at the time. Yeah. And so then you would say, but like that genuinely makes you feel like disconnected from me. Like you want to be touched and like hugged or kissed or what have you. And like for me, of course, there was a time in our relationship where I feel like I was doing everything as every woman always feels mm -hmm. and, uh, or someone in the relationship always feels. And 
I was feeling super unappreciated mm. or not loved as well because you weren't helping me acts of service. Yeah. Little did we know, come to find out later that my love language is acts of service and yours is personal, is touch. Pers- is it personal touch? Personal physical touch. touch. Physical touch. There you go. Physical. I was like, what is happening? Physical touch. What are touch. the other ones, you know? All five. Um, Oh, you're going to ask my baby brain right now. Sorry, there's, I could Google it. There's um, acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation, gifts, and I thought there was one more. Hold on, I'm pulling it up right now. It's uh, words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality mm-hmm. time, and acts quality of service. Quality time. There you go. Yeah, because Alex's is quality time. Of course. <laughs> that's funny. I forgot about that. Because your kids have a love language too. Yeah. So yeah, that's our love languages. And I think the way we show up, it's actually funny because I'll tell you, uh, we went to the store the other day and I really wanted this Phil's coffee, but it was beans. And I was like, okay. So I, I grabbed the coffee and I was going to grind the beans at the store. And Jerome, Mr. Anxiety says, oh my gosh, don't grind the beans here at the store. Is that kind of nasty? You can dude? get COVID. Put that COVID out? <laughs> Come on. No, Bro, literally you dump the, it in the top of the machine. And then everyone touches the machine and sticks their bag in. Sh- How's that different than the- touching your cart? You they clean those. They so sanitize I, them. Okay. So he said no. And he Say was like, what? it's fine. I will grind the beans for you when I get home. And I was like, okay, fine. Sure you will. Whatever. Because I hate grinding my own coffee beans at home. And so then this morning I woke up to make the coffee And I opened the jar and it was like a full canister of ground coffee beans. And I literally was like, oh my God, best husband ever. But it was like something as small as that. If I had to grind my beans when I woke up this morning, I would have been so annoyed. So annoyed, especially because of the conversation we had. Yeah. But even without, I hate having to grind my beans. It's like an extra step in the morning with your coffee. So I was super happy. So it's just a small acts of service. And that made me like so ecstatic. Like I was in a really good mood this morning. So yeah. That's how you nail love language. (laughs) But for you, it's harder. Like, I feel like with you have physical touch. Come on, baby. But, like, I'll try to, like, yesterday I tried to give Drome a kiss and, like, give him a hug. Dude, I'm literally eating. (laughs) I always manage to hug Drome. How do you even do that? Literally making a sandwich. (laughs) Like, I'm, I'm, like, making love to my food. You're gonna come over trying to give me a kiss, dude? I told him I think it's because I just want him. Uh, he's so attractive when he also has food in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest lie ever. It's the most frustrating thing. Serena's like, give me a hug, babe. And my mouth is literally drooling because I'm trying to eat like McDonald's or something. <laughs> Why does it have to be McDonald's? I don't know. Pizza. Like it's literally been That's like four so hours. I haven't ate. I like made this huge meal. Oh, we got to reset, reset the camera. We got to reset the camera. Um, but that happened yesterday. And it's funny because you hugging... Look- you and you were like, can you get off of me? And I was like, well, I try to give you physical touch. We're, oh, okay, what dude, is up? This table's dude. so small. <laughs> you, you're just like the Hulk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Drum can't sit at our de- at my desk. Put your chair lower. Is it? I want to be taller than you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so I think, but that's just a small example of how we show up for each other. I, I genuinely do try to remind myself like if I see Jerome and during lunch or end of the day like give him a hug sit next to him like I know how you like to be touched obviously and so sit I, on me <laughs> stop being annoying okay I'll stop <laughs> so I try to do that like rub your back or your, you know whatever so I think that's how I try to show up for you and I think you especially like when I am really busy like you will I mean, there's so many things to do in the day with your house and your kids and all the things. And Drone will really make sure, like, if I'm not doing something or I can't do something, like, you'll do it. Yeah. It'll be done. It's cool, too. I like to make you happy, babe. Yeah. you Drone, you're like a natural born gift giver. So even if it's just like an acts of service, like it's a gift. Yeah, it feels and good so for it me. Make, it makes Drone so <laughs> satisfied. I guess that's what makes it easy yeah yeah like seeing you happy makes me feel like yeah. i got what you got you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah it's like a, whereas i have to actively like remind myself oh, wow, you're but lousy. since i've been pregnant i feel like i'm a lot like i want to hug you because I, I told you like it feels good when i just like just hang. hang on you <laughs> i'm using you but yeah so that's our that's our love languages and the way that we communicate with each other and, and how we show up for each other with our love languages but i will also say it, when we first learned about love languages, I don't know if you remember, it wasn't mm-hmm. an easy thing. I don't remember. 
Really? No. <laughs> I distinctly remember making you take the quiz on a drive home. Oh, when was that? It was a while back. Oh, okay. But there's a quiz, the love, love language quiz. Just look it up online and figure out what your love language is. You can do it for your kids, for your partner, for whomever. I like to. I think the idea of doing it for family members and stuff is really cool too. Who because did this? Uh, the author. I don't know what his name. What his name is. Jerry or Chapman. Name is. Yeah. Is that the guy? I think so. How do you come about with this? Okay, here right, we go. Well, this is a different Look podcast. it up later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a, a podcast on love languages. Have we not done that? Oh, that's cool. So, like, he put the five taco. This person put five taco love languages. So, tacos are the example, and it says words of affirmation. Your tacos are delicious. Act of service. I made you tacos. Okay. Receiving gifts. Here's a taco. Quality time. Let's go out for tacos. Physical okay. touch. Let me hold you like a taco. I'll take all those tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold me like a taco. I'll hold you though. like a taco. I hold no. a taco like this. That's just weird. Or actually, I hold it like this. Underneath yeah, I hold and it like over. This. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. This is weird. All right. But yeah, so I think that answers that question. Anything else you want to add on love languages? No. I highly recommend it's them. It's pretty though. straightforward, like to find out what you like, and you kind of know. Once you, yeah. once you read them all, you kind of like instinctually pick which one you like first yeah. or like which one draws to you more, and you kind of know. Exactly. I think it's good to know, like, the way you feel loved it's just the point is like your partner doesn't necessarily feel loved the same way yeah that's what it's so that's confusing the biggest guys mistake. think some way women think another yeah. way and like, then you're like you think you're giving love and the other person feels super unloved yeah and it's like that's heck of funny that's like if i like like give you hugs every day and made out with annoying. you and i'm like i'm loving her so much and you're like dude get the fuck off me <laughs> exactly how right. our relationship is and then it's just like on the other hand if i like and then like one day i fold your laundry and you're like oh, oh my, my god gosh. i love him the so much you come ever. up to me and like the biggest hug <laughs> not interesting yeah it that's is. weird yeah um but I, maybe that's where people go uh like so astray in like relationship like they think they're doing they don't part. understand each other they're not understanding yeah. each other. it's hard when you don't understand yourself yeah then how do you expect your partner to understand you that's, it's wild. This okay. I don't mean to like throw this in there, but like that's why I created the conscious relationship circle. Oh my god. No, but I'm seriously like, you think your partner is supposed to understand you and know everything about you and speak your language and love you, but you don't even know what your love language is, but you want him to know what your love language is, right? Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. You, you got to do the work for yourself first. Figure you have to do it. You got to figure it out. Yeah. I will just say on a final note on this question is that a lot of people will take the love language quiz and then do nothing with it. Yeah. As we do with everything. It's like you you do something, well, you learn the, something, and then... It goes back to the previous question where we were talking about like the romance part, and it's, it's yeah. the effort, dude. It's the conscious it's effort. It's the fucking effort, man. Yeah. Like a rela- it's teamwork. It's work, dude. Like yeah. the relationship, like you and me, like me trying to do something that I know you love in your way is such an effort, yeah. dude. Like I could totally ignore that. Yeah. Right? Which I don't would have be to do really shit. bad. Yeah, and vice versa. Like, you yeah. don't gotta do shit either, and then we could just be here yeah and then like what do we have we have like an unhappy shitty relationship but you're you're gonna have a that's when people get cheated on you have like relationships with unfulfilled needs yeah and then someone else gives you that attention you're looking for and it's like okay well here we go tell me more (laughs) it's the truth so i guess yeah take the love language quiz for you and your partner but like also make it a fun challenge. I've said that with people like their partners oftentimes don't want to do it with them. And I'm like, make it fun. Like make it a joke. Keep it light. Like, ha ha. Like I'm speaking your love language. You know, like it doesn't have to be so damn serious all the time it's either. Really dark. It did. A cloud oh, covered. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everybody makes things complicated, man. Like especially yeah. relationships. Like yeah. look how easy it is to, I mean, I shouldn't say it's, it's easy. It's not but easy. As you, it's like everything takes effort, dude. And especially yeah. a relationship and I would hope that everyone's putting in that effort, man, to make it, to not waste another human's time because time is basically all we have yeah. and we can't get it back. And especially in a relationship and with your love and stuff, take that shit serious, man. But think about that and the whole concept of life, like people with their health and fitness, people with their relationships, people with their careers, people with their money. It's a conscious freaking effort. Like you yeah. want anything in life. It's a conscious effort. Go out and just actively do it and you'll have it. Do you know what I mean? And but think about the number of people who don't have all the things that they want or who never will. Yeah. Why? Cuz they're not making a conscious consistent effort. Period. That's an, it's crazy. But that's it and it takes work and Say what you want and then you do it. Dude. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Say it and then you go do it. 
Yeah, I think that's the problem is so many people say a lot of things and they don't do anything more than two weeks. <sighs> that's like, okay, well, I mean, fuck. <laughs> what, what more is there to say about that? So, yeah, but anyways, as you were talking, I was just thinking like, well, this is such a bigger problem. Yeah. But yeah, definitely pertain to relationships. All right, you want to do one more? Yeah, of course. So we have one more question. Well, one that I wrote out, I don't, I could always pull them up again, but the last question is actually, how do you both manage to work out? Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. So, funny story. No, I'm just kidding. What? We've always managed to work out. Even, think about even back in the day. Dude, first of all, before I even met <laughs> Serena, I was obsessed with working out. I still am to this day. Like, I love it. Like, mm -hmm. no one's taking that from me. Like, any kind of physical activity, like, if I don't do it for more than a week, I'm yeah. done. Like, that shit, You're like, dead. lights Okay, I just asked him, like, dude, do you take a day off anymore? Like, yeah. I literally was like, I just want a day where I can spend the day with my husband. Dude, whether it's working out at the gym, jujitsu, running outside, like, dude, I'll yeah. fucking do anything, like, for, for like, top golf, get like, for some in. fun shit. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, Physical movement, yeah. But, like, more so for exercise, though, because people yeah. see the gym as a chore, which is crazy to me, but whatever. Anyways, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> anyways, like, the gym is, like, a fucking playground for adults. We're just, we're just lazy. We're just lazy. Anyways, I, it's, like, for me, it's such a priority. Like, yeah. I, I like, it's not even a question of if I'm going to do it, it's just when. Yeah. To go work out. Like, for me, it's such a big deal in my eyes. Like, it's going to get done at one point in the day. There's a lot of challenges. So, like, even going back in the day of, like, when we both were working, like, nine to fives. Yeah. And having to leave. Like, what... I remember when I first started getting into health and fitness... I would work out after work and it was super hard. Like I would drive and then I would pick up Alex, take him to the gym, put him in the daycare. He would cry. And then I'd go do my like 45 minute workout. Do you remember how bad that was? Yeah. So we used the daycare gyms a lot. And then it got to a point where Alex would just cry. He didn't and, like it. Yeah. He didn't like it. So then, uh, that's when Jerome was, had to be supportive and like, he was like, okay, now you go. So we started taking turns. And so that worked. And then I, find, I quit, actually. I don't know if you remember that. Um, I stopped working out because I was like, dude, it's impossible. Like, with work, I don't have the time. Yeah. And someone said to me, it was actually Rebel, uh, your sister's old friend. friend. Yeah. yeah. She said, well, have you ever thought about going at, like, 5 a.m. before work? And That's I was so like, funny. what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I never thought person. about that. That's hilarious. <laughs> So I like, never thought about sacrificing my sleep. And so after that, I would go to the gym at 5 a.m. Like every day. And then you, you, when were you working out? I would out? go late. Yeah, you'd go late. in the evening. Yeah. So we were taking turns. So yeah, we've kind of always made it a priority. I mean, to the point, like, I mean, if we're being honest, like it is, it became such a priority in our lives. So like. Even when we lived in Santa Cruz, like Jerome would come home from jujitsu at like 9.30 p.m. Yeah. And I would be ready to go walk out the door and go to the gym. Yeah. Which is insane. And then even like with yoga, I would go catch on the days you didn't go to jujitsu. I would take my 7.30 p.m. yoga classes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like it was just our priorities. We just got to make it, it happen. It's priorities. But it's also like you, we're, we have to help each other because it's like who's watching Alex, obviously. Yeah. And so, yeah, he already asked me. He's like, hey, so, like, when the baby's born, uh, like, <laughs> what's it, our I gym schedule? What's the, what's the plan, dude? <laughs> what are we doing here? But I was telling him it's going to be a while before I can work out again, and then we'll go from there. But, like, how do we both manage to work out is we make it a priority. It's a priority, yeah. yeah. We make a plan, then we stick to it. Yeah. It's and that's not simple. to say, like, <sighs> I hate... The gym can take like two hours, right, of your day. Yeah. And so, for example, on the weekends, Drum likes to work out, and I do too, like on one of the weekend days, but it's like, okay, so you're working out on the weekend, but like I love my weekend mornings, and I want us as a family to be together. I like to make breakfast, have coffee, like wake up nice and slow. Drum's mind, though, is like, no, I should wake up and go to the gym so I can be home before our, you know, you want to do something. Get it done. And I'm like, no, because the mornings are together are more important. So now you go in the middle of the day. So then he goes at 12, gets done working out at 1.30, gets home and showered and everything. And it's 2.30, 3 o'clock. So let's say three hours. And I'm like, cool. So you missed the bulk of the whole fucking day. So dramatic. <laughs> it's true, though, because then it's dark two For hours pregnant, later. Serena, if we were lit and we were young, guys. <laughs> if we were young. 
And so, yeah, I mean, but there is moments where I'm like, dude, okay, then you need to like hurry up and go. Yeah. So like, it's not always that I'm like, yeah, I go to the gym and you're like, yeah, let's do it. And, but it still has to get done. And there's also times where I would just miss it. Yeah. But before that I would plan ahead. So then when I did miss it, I didn't feel bad or like yeah. bad. Well, that's like if we're going to go somewhere over the weekend, exactly. rearrange your workout schedule so you can get all your workouts done during the week. Yeah, so even, even when we work the full nine to five, we still go. And yeah. then even now when we work from home, we have even more flexibility. I think one thing I've noticed is like everything you do, if you do it as a team. Sorry. <laughs> If you do it as a team, then I just think it's if you're on the same page. Because we've had times where, like, if it's, like, with nutrition, like, you're dieting and I'm not. And it's, it just makes it so much harder. Like, if if you're kind of, like, both working out or you're both doing certain things, then it's, I feel like it's a lot easier. It is. But then, like, right now, it's really not that bad. No, be yeah, because I'm not working out at the gym near, like, Serena's once or twice all a week. Of foods right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell all the people. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, so, but yeah, that's how we both managed to work out. Once again, it's just, it's a priority. It's and the teamwork, the we, we and also the plan out our workouts for the week. You do, I don't. No, but like, if, like, think about when we had the nine to five. It was like, okay, these are the days I'm going to go at 5 a.m. Oh, like these are knew, the days you're going to go. Know my schedule. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to your work Monday schedule. through Thursday. Yeah. You're going to yoga this day and this day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the gym this day and this day. But yeah. yeah, it's always been a part. It's always been like a priority for us. Like, yeah, especially since I got you in it. Serena never worked out before. Okay, I bought. Her I had her a first, one year old. I bought her first gym membership. I made her go. <laughs> she was scared. I don't of know weights. what that says about you. You just got your girlfriend a gym membership. What were you? What? What? No, I'm just kidding. I was trying to get. No, you I fit. really wanted to lose weight for like the very first time after having Alex and Jerome signed us up for a gym membership. Finally, she got some gains. Learned the ways. <laughs> All the things. Weight loss can be so easy. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Don't you think? It's science. It's freaking math. It is so not hard. But People you know are just what? not it's patient. It's another thing that takes effort and patience. Yeah. And consistency. You if you're go. not consistent, Boom. then nothing's going to happen. The theme of our podcast today. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, that was our last question that I'm going to I'm gonna roll with. It's been about 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. We should sign off. And we're going to sign off. Yeah. I think that was good. I hope I hope that just allows you guys every once in a while. I was like, you know what? We'll do a Q&A. Answer any questions that you guys want us to answer. And uh, just, I mean, build a connection and be a human with you guys. And, like, actually talk and just get to know us. Not always teaching and preaching and yeah. doing all the things. We're well, always teaching and preaching. Chat. Right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always listening. Right? I love it. Well, you guys, let us know if you have any other questions that you would like us to answer. Um, yeah, it's been good. I like doing these podcasts. That's sweet. So good. We'll see you guys next Friday. Good enough. Bye. Peace. That was easy. Yeah. I was hella hot. Here you go.